everybody. So, I wanted to, I was going to wait till later to do a live video, but I decided I would go ahead and do it because I, I guess I got my feelings and just feel like that I need to go ahead and do a video. And I'm going to do a video, I did this video for my personal page on Anaya's Heart. Most of you know, you know, I, basically the, the, I'm the president of Anaya's Heart, CEO, founder, um, but some things I don't want to share on Anaya's Heart page, but it's probably kind of hard to separate me from Anaya's Heart. That's kind of impossible to do, but I'm coming to you today as a mom, uh, a mom, just a mom, that, but a mom who has lost her, uh, lost children, uh, two children, uh, losing one to kidnapping and murder. Um, so, most of you know I led the search for Carly Russell because when I got the call Monday, I'm sorry, Monday, it's today's Monday. You have to forgive me. I'm sick. I don't feel good. Um, on Friday morning, went immediately because I was asked to go and did not hesitate. The family asked me if I would lead um, the command center in search, and I said, absolutely. Um, and Anaya's Heart and um, Vet Dirty and um, so many other people, um, hundreds of people, you know, came out to look for Carly. Um, we did what we, we are supposed to do. That is exactly what we did everything the right way. Um, I'm not going to speak on any of about anything that has to do with what happened um that that will all come out later right now as a mom who has lost her child to kidnapping and murder um i can't even tell you i cannot explain to you what it feels like to have a missing child just hope that you're never in that situation No matter what the circumstances, no matter what they are, when your child is missing, I think I've tried to explain this before. Hey, brother, John. No, there's no, yeah, you're right. There's no need to explain, but I just want people to understand. And I'm going to make another live video on Anaya's heart. We're going to talk about safety on Anaya's heart. Uh, later, maybe tonight, if not tomorrow, probably tomorrow, because I've, I've got a lot going on today, uh, trying to recuperate from the weekend. I'm, I'm very sick. Uh, most of you know I have autoimmune disease, and being out, I'm not supposed to be out, and but I would do it all over again without a heart, without a question. I would get right back up and go, and I know my brothers, um, Seth Forget, John Sloan, John Hill, his wife Kristen Hill, Crystal Schubert, um, the people that are on my team for Anaya's heart, we would get back up in a heartbeat if somebody needs us. And um, I guess what I'm trying to say is I personally am so thankful that Carly is alive. Okay. That's all that matters right now. Because this could easily not be the case. So yes, this brings emotion because do you know how happy it makes me that Carly's alive? <laughs> Do you know how many missing people there are out there that are dead? And people that have been killed and murdered uh, that didn't get to come home? Mine being one of them. So just the sheer fact that Carly is alive and that she is okay right now to this second is the most important thing to me and i hope it is to most of you you know we're, no speculation from me no judgment from me on anything i today i'm just 100 percent thankful that carly's alive now i am going to talk a little bit about safety on here people want to know people want to know people want to know yes they want to know and it will come out things will come out but People want to know because we need to know if there's somebody on the loose. We need to know if there's a predator out there. Y'all, there's a predator out there. 
please, if you don't hear anything else I'm saying to you right now, I don't do this for likes. I ain't got time to do it for likes. I don't, I'm not a creator. I'm not, I'm not none of that. I am a mom whose daughter, beautiful daughter, who I'm in her bed, not her bedroom, but Ayla's bedroom with Anaya's bed behind me. My daughter should be asleep in this bed right now. But I'm in here doing a live trying to tell people about life to save their life. I am sick. I do not feel good at all. Period. I don't, I, that's why people haven't seen me much. I don't feel good. Or if you, if I did feel good, I would be every day, every week, I would, on Naya's heart would be on top of our safety education, our self-defense classes, everything. But I've just been sick. But when I'm called to go, just like for Josh Flanagan in Winston County, for Amber Grimes, I went just a few weeks ago, even though I didn't feel good. I went for Carly and I would do it right now if somebody calls. I wish I could do more. But let me tell y'all, there are predators out there. Yes, you need to be concerned. We're not talking about Carly's situation. We're talking about in general, in life. Worry about that. Worry about there are predators out there, everywhere, everywhere you live. Every, it doesn't matter. Please get that through your head. It can happen to anybody, anywhere, anytime. It doesn't matter. Do you think that, that um, there's just one predator out there? If you think there's just one person out there that can hurt you, kidnap you, kill you, murder you, you are, you have a lot to learn. And I hope you listen to me. I hope you share this with your family, your children. There are predators everywhere, and there could be even in your own family. Okay? So, if you don't learn anything... Everybody's hollering right now and screaming about, we need to know if there's a, the police need to let us know if we're in danger. Yep, you're in danger. You are in danger. Just take that from me if you don't learn anything else. You're in danger right now because there are predators out there, period. Why do you think I do what I do? I have a lot of insight that a lot of people don't have because my daughter was kidnapped and murdered because of what I learned not from that experience, not just from that experience, but what I investigated and then I learned what's out there and what's going on in our world. And there's a whole lot more of them. Okay. Please know that. Please take care of yourself. Please put your safety first. Put it first. Okay. That's what I'm trying to beg you guys. Stop focusing on we need to know if there's a predator. Yep, there are. They're out there. They're there. They sure, and I'm sorry I'm emotional right now, but I am adamant. I do this to save lives. My life that I have lived, all of my life, I've been through a, so many different experiences, and not, not only losing an eye to kidnapping and murder, I was a sexual assault nurse at Children's for almost 20 years, an ER nurse. I have been a victim of sexual abuse. I've been a victim of domestic violence. I've been a victim of a lot of things I've, and I've lost a lot of people so i use my experience in life to help people i could care less about uh people knowing uh, getting likes on facebook or instagram or tiktok heck i don't even get on tiktok much or, or instagram i don't on there i do it to save your life i do it because obviously obviously the things that i've been through in my life are for a bigger purpose. And my daughter wrote a scripture in church to sh down on her paper to show me the purpose you ha have for me so I can live my life for a bigger purpose. And that's what I'm trying to do. That's all I'm trying to do. So I just want everybody to um, try to step back just for a minute. And yes, there's a lot of upset people out there. And I really, I'm not going to address what did happen, what didn't happen. All I'm going to address is Put yourself in the shoes of having a missing child, no matter what, no matter what, it is a miracle, no matter what happened, that one, one, two days your child's missing and then you have your child back. That is so overwhelming, I can't even tell you how I've broke down. I have broke down. I am so thankful no matter what that she's alive because a lot of people put their heart and soul into Carly coming home and she's home. And to me, that's all that matters right right now. So, I hope this video helps people. I hope it saves your life. 
I hope it helps you understand that, yes, we're in danger. It doesn't matter about that one, this, one, this one very important situation. Um, it matters that you are aware. It matters that you are aware of what's out here in the world. So, I think there's probably a whole lot more that I wanted to say. And I just, <laughs> you know, I, my thoughts are not all there. I, um, I'm going to get myself together. I'm trying to get myself together today um, from everything that's happened this weekend. But, uh, like I say, I am just here to help people and save people's lives if I can. And be there in any way possible that I can. Um, so, yeah. I love all of you. Thank y'all for your sweet comments and support. It's not about me. Um, but y'all are so good to me. <laughs> Y'all want to make sure that I'm taking care of myself. You want to make sure that I'm okay. And you just don't understand what that means to me. Because my heart, every day I put a burden on myself. I put the burden on me. Because I feel like the experience I have experienced, I'm supposed to go out and help other people. I can't, I couldn't do it any other way. Sorry. So, um, I do put myself behind I don't put myself first at all. I put other people first, but, uh, and like I said, I wouldn't do it any other way. I just wouldn't have it any other way. So I, I need y'all and y'all are good to me and I appreciate it. And thank you for all your support. Thank you for caring about me and my family. And thank you to everybody who helped, um, in the search for Carly, um, uh, because without y'all and your support, I couldn't have been there to help that family because no matter what, it was an emergency. No matter what the situation, it was an emergency and they needed people. They needed me and they needed you. They needed people. So, um, like I say, guys, just remember, if you don't take anything away from this video, remember to keep yourself safe. Um, yes, there's predators out there. They're all over. They're all over. So, um, I love you guys. I'm going to get off of this video um, and try to get myself together. Um, and then I will probably... Uh, make a another video tomorrow for Anaya's heart. Um, or I am going to make another video actually with my brother that just came on here with um, Harry Turner uh, traveling shoes. Um, we're going to make another video on Anaya's heart. So, but anyway, I just couldn't hold back any longer. I had to 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 say something. Um, so that was it. And I hope it helped you guys. And I love you guys. And thank you for everything. All right. All right. Talk to you guys later. Bye.
any injuries on the child from where you're at, correct? No, no, but I can't really see them that good. Okay, try to keep an eye on them for the best that you can because I don't want you to lose track of them. Um, okay. All right, and do they have shoes on? No. No shoes? Not that I can see. I can't really see that one. Okay. All right, I've got them on the way, okay? Just try to stay, keep an eye on them, but officers are on the way, okay? Okay, thanks. Thank you. Okay, bye. Hi, I am on Interstate 459, and there is a kid just walking by their cell. Oh, hold on, hold on. Where, where on 459 are you? Um, um... I do want to get to a developing story that we're following coming in out of Alabama. Take a look right there. Police in Alabama searching for a 25 year old woman who vanished after telling a family member that she was stopping to check on a child she saw walking on the side of an interstate highway. Hoover police say Carly Nicole Russell called 911 Thursday night and then a family member to say that she saw a young child walking on the side of I-459. When officers arrived at the location, they found Russell's car and her cell phone, but were unable to find her or a child in that area. Lieutenant Daniel Lowe with the police department said the family member on the phone with Russell lost contact with her even though the line remained open. He said a single witness reported possibly seeing a gray vehicle and a man standing outside of Carly's vehicle, but they have no additional information there. Our Fox Birmingham team spoke with folks who are in that area who are doing everything they can to find this woman. It was all Carly Russell's neighbors could think to do, pray. I mean, what else is there to do? Um, I know that there's a lot of people out there searching for her, um, and I, I feel like this is the first place that we needed to do is just come before the Lord and just you know, prayer is, is what I can do. Um, I not, might not be able to get out and search for her, but I can do that. Rallying around each other, praying for a girl they say often babysits many of their own children. You know, our daughter just graduated from nursing school and travels down 459 all the time. And we know that she would, in a heartbeat, stop if she saw a toddler walking along the road. I mean, it's just human nature. It could be me just as easily as it could be Carlos. And my heart goes out to the Russells and what they're dealing with right now because it could be me and you could be talking to Carlos. For Carly's neighbors, the vigil is not the end of their efforts to bring her home. This is what's going on in our world. I mean, and it's happening and we're, we're, we're crazy not to think that it's happening right out our front door and it's situations like this that you know bring awareness to everyone but you know as a as a as a society we need to be out there um, educating our community this 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 thing happening to children needs to be at the forefront of everything and that was our Fox Birmingham station with that report as neighbors, folks in that area are doing everything they can to find the woman on your screen here, Carly Nicole Russell, who again called 911 Thursday night, then a family member to say that she saw a young child walking on the side of Interstate 459. But when officers got there, they found Russell's car and her phone, but were unable to find her or the child. Hoover police did hold a news conference late yesterday. We do have that. It's only about six minutes long, but I do want to play that for you here raw and unfiltered. I want to relay some of the facts as we know them so far and a few additional details that we've been able to uncover uh, in this case. On July the 13th at approximately 9.34 p.m., the Hoover 911 center received a call from a 25-year-old female on I-459 southbound near mile marker 11. She reported that she saw a toddler walking on the side of the interstate. 
After calling 911, the caller stopped to check on the child and also called a family member to report the same details. The family member lost contact with the caller, but the line remained open. Police officers who were already en route to the location of the initial 911 call located the female's vehicle as well as some of her belongings at the scene. They were unable to find her or a child in the area, and Hoover Police have not received any additional calls of someone missing a small child. Detectives are currently investigating these incidents and are requesting the public's assistance to help locate Carlethia Carly Nicole Russell. She's described as a 25-year-old black female who is 5 foot 4, 150 to 160 pounds. She was last seen wearing a black shirt, black pants, and white Nike tissues, tennis shoes. Carly got off work last night around 8.20 p.m. from a business at the Summit in Birmingham. She's also believed to have stopped to pick up food from a business at the Colonnade before driving towards Hoover on I-459, where she stopped near mile marker 11. That location is between the Galleria flyover and exit 10 for Highway 150. A single witness has reported possibly seeing a gray vehicle with a light-complected male standing outside of Carly's vehicle, but we have no further information on that individual or the vehicle at this time. No piece of information is too small in this investigation. If you have any information, please contact Detective Brad Fountain at 205-444-7562 or Sergeant Drew Mims at 205-739-7274. You can also call Crime Stoppers of Metro Alabama at 205-254-7777 if you wish to remain anonymous. An anonymous donor has offered $20,000 for the safe return of Carly Russell, in addition to $5,000 offered by Crime Stoppers. Again, you can call Crime Stoppers if you wish to remain anonymous, or you can call either of the investigators whose numbers I provided. The Hoover Police Department is currently partnering with many of our local, state, and federal partners in this investigation, and we're very grateful for the outpouring of support from our local community as well as the law enforcement community. We will continue to provide periodic updates as we have them, and we'll utilize our Twitter account, at Hoover PD, to release any pertinent information to the public. We would also ask the community to keep the Russell family in your thoughts and prayers during this very difficult time. At this time, I'll take a few of your questions. Do you believe that she was taken by someone, perhaps, when she pulled her car off? We currently are, are investigating every possibility in this case. Uh, we're certainly leaving nothing off the table. Was her car door locked open? I don't know the answer to that. And is there any... Um mentality that this child might have been bait or if there ever was a child you said there's no missing persons cases for children again with all of those details we're, we're leaving nothing uh, off the table and no stone unturned in investigating some of these facts are y'all getting a great deal of tips as a great deal of public awareness i know folks are handing out flyers are you are you hearing from the public on this yes we are we've, we've received a lot of tips and as each of them comes in we're assigning investigators to investigate those and, and uh, see where that information leads include several internet searches in the days leading up to their disappearance that I think are very relevant to this case. On July 11th at 7.30 a.m., the term, you have to pay for an Amber Alert was searched. On July 13th at 1.03 a.m., the day of her disappearance, the term, how to take money from a register without being caught was searched. On July 13th, at 2.13 a.m., the day of her disappearance, the term Birmingham bus station was searched. On July 13th, 2.35 a.m., a search for a one-way bus ticket from Birmingham to Nashville was conducted with a departure date of July 13th. On July 13th, at 12.10 p.m., a search for the movie Taken, a film about abduction, was conducted. There were two searches related to Amber Alerts on a computer at Carly's place of employment, including one regarding the maximum age of an Amber Alert. There were other searches on Carly's phone that appeared to shed some light on her mindset, but out of respect for her privacy, we will not be releasing the content of those searches at this time. We've asked to interview Carly a second time, but have not been granted that request. As you can see, it includes several internet searches in the days leading up to her disappearance. We were able to obtain a brief statement from her prior to being treated and released. During the statement, she told detectives that while traveling down the interstate, she saw a baby walking down the side of the road and called 911. She stuttered when she got out of her vehicle to check on the child, 
a man came out of the trees and mumbled that he was checking on the baby. She claimed that the man then picked her up and she screamed. She stated he then made her go over a fence. She claims he then forced her into a car and the next thing she remembers is being in the trailer of an 18-wheeler. She stated that the male was with a female. However, she never saw the female, only hearing her voice. She also told detectives she could hear a baby crying. She told detectives the male had orange hair with a big bald spot on the back. She said she was able to escape the 18-wheeler and fled on foot, only to be captured again, and then was put in a car. She claimed she was then blindfolded, but was not tied up because the captor said they did not want to leave impressions on her wrists. She said that they took her into a house and made her get undressed. She believes they took pictures of her, but she does not remember them having any physical or sexual contact. She stated the next day she woke up and was fed cheese crackers by the female. She said the woman also played with her hair, but could not remember anything else. At some point, she was put back in a vehicle she claims was able to escape while it was in the West Hoover area. She told detectives she ran through lots of woods until she came out near her residence. During this interview, detectives noted that Carly had a small injury to her lip and she claimed that her head was hurting. She also had a tear on her shirt. Detectives also noted that she had $107 cash in her right sock. Out of respect for Carly and her family, Detectives did not press for additional information in this interview and made plans to speak with her in detail after giving her time to rest. Detectives were able to obtain a brief statement from her. Detectives were able to obtain a brief statement from her prior to being treated and released. We turned out to a case we've been following. It's a strange one out of Alabama. Yeah, the parents of the woman who vanished for 48 hours after calling police to report a toddler walking alone down a highway. Well, they are speaking out in an exclusive interview. NBC's Pr Priscilla Thompson spoke with them. She joins us now. Hey, Priscilla, good morning. Ahoda, good morning. As questions around this case intensify, the family is urging the public not to speculate, saying that it's upsetting to Carly, and right now their focus is on her physical and mental well-being. That moment you all first laid eyes on her again, what was it like? To me, I mean, just so much joy. This morning, in an exclusive sit-down with NBC News, the parents of 25-year-old Carly Russell are speaking out, describing the moment their daughter appeared on their doorstep after being missing for more than 48 hours. What did you do when you saw her? We tried to hug her as best we could, but I had to stand back because she was not in a good state. So we had to stand back and let medical well, professionals work with her. Um, but it's Last Thursday, police say Carly called 911 to report a toddler walking alone on the interstate. She pulled over while on the phone with a family member who described hearing Carly scream. Her vehicle is unlocked, running, all her personal belongings except for her phone. On the scene, police found no sign of Carly or a child, and they say no children were reported as missing during that time period. The Russells waited in agony until Saturday night. There were actual, actually just so many calls and texts from people who maliciously lied to us. I just didn't know people could be so evil. Authorities have not indicated where Carly was during the 48 hours she was missing or what happened. Her parents declined to share what their daughter told them, citing the ongoing investigation. And can you tell me... What happened Saturday night? Did you just get a knock at the door? Anything leading to, to the case itself, we, we can't discuss that. But they say speculation about the circumstances surrounding Carly's disappearance are only making things worse. She's having to deal with the trauma of people just making completely false allegations about her. Her family now urging the public to let the investigation play out, but mentioning an abductor. Her mother asking to read a brief message to the public. Um, Carly has given detectives her statement um, so that they can continue to pursue her abductor. Do you believe that there's an abductor still out there? Absolutely. Absolutely. 
NBC News has reached out to the Hoover Police Department to ask whether they're looking for an individual involved. Police have just said they're following up on all information provided by Carly. And when I talked to you all on Saturday, you also said your daughter is a fighter and she would find a way back to you. I felt that in my heart. Is that what happened? She did. She found her way back to us. However, we can't discuss the details of that. But they say one thing is clear. Do you believe she was fighting for her life? Oh, she definitely fought for her life. There were moments when she physically had to fight for her life, and there were moments when she had to mentally fight for her life. But she made it back to you. She, she made, made it back. back. Yeah, she did make it back. All right, Priscilla, so investigators are obviously busy on this case. What are they looking into going forward? Yeah, Hoda, right now they're analyzing that initial 911 call and also that traffic cam video showing that car driving on the interstate very slowly with its flashers on, believed to be Carly's car. And of course, they're looking at the evidence from the crime scene, including the car and her cell phone, which was found on the roadway nearby. Police say that they have been able to account for all of her steps leading up to her disappearance, but those 48 hours when she was gone still remain remain a mystery. Hoda? Mm. Yeah, leaving behind her phone, her pocketbook, and all those things, a lot of things that uh, investigators are looking into. Priscilla, mm. thank you. Our new questions tonight about the mysterious disappearance of a 25-year-old Alabama woman. Police said today that Carly Russell gave a harrowing account of being abducted by a man with orange hair, but that her internet searches before she vanished included a Hollywood kidnapping thriller movie. We get more now from CBS's Lilia Luciano. Tonight, police provide some answers to the many questions that followed a bizarre story of abduction in Birmingham when Carly Russell disappeared after making an alarming call to 911. I am on Interstate 459, and there is a kid just walking by their cell. Her family says she was on the phone with her sister-in-law, who says they heard her scream. We pretty much know exactly what took place from the time she left work until she got on the 911 call. And we can see getting out of that, getting out of the car on the interstate from, from that footage. And after that, I think she only knows. She told police that the orange-haired man had kept her in the back of an 18-wheeler. Police say during the investigation, it was revealed that she had made questionable Internet searches days and hours before vanishing, including about the Hollywood kidnapping thriller Taken. I will look for you. I will find you. On July 11th at 7.30 a.m., the term, you have to pay for an Amber Alert was searched. Russell's disappearance prompted a statewide two-day search. Police say Russell eventually walked home, was treated at a hospital, and released. Hoover PD are still investigating, and they do want to ask her more questions. But today, police said that they have yet to find any evidence of either a wandering toddler or a kidnapper. Nora. So many questions. Lilia Luciano, thank you. It's about the two-day disappearance of an Alabama woman who says she was abducted while trying to help a toddler on the highway. Police say now there is no evidence to back up her claims. Janae Norman has the latest. Good morning, Janae. Hey, Michael, good morning. The police chief says they still need to hear more from Carly after her disappearance and subsequent return ignited a firestorm of questions surrounding his office's investigation. Multiple local, state, and federal resources were poured into this case, but the question remains, what happened to Carly Russell? The shocking new details this morning laid out by Hoover police and their investigation into Carly Russell's mysterious disappearance and return, including questionable Google searches made before her alleged abduction. The term, you have to pay for an Amber Alert was searched. A search for a one-way bus ticket from Birmingham to Nashville, a search for the movie taken. Authorities citing immense public pressure for more answers about what may have happened when the 25-year-old disappeared last Thursday, unable to corroborate any of her story. We've been unable to verify most of Carly's initial statement made to investigators, and we have no reason to believe that there is a threat to the public safety. Her disappearance sparked national intrigue after she called 911 to report seeing a toddler walking alone on the side of the interstate. I think it's a boy, a little boy. Right now? Okay. Is he wearing clothes? Yes. Okay. What is he wearing? Um, it's a white t-shirt and it doesn't look like he has any pants on. It looks like a diaper. 
She stuttered when she got out of her vehicle to check on the child. A man came out of the trees. She claimed that the man then picked her up and she screamed. Police say Russell told investigators a man first forced her into multiple vehicles, telling detectives there was also a woman involved who she never saw, only heard. Russell allegedly telling police the couple blindfolded her, made her undress, and possibly took photos of her, but that she did not remember them having any sexual contact. At some point, she was put back in a vehicle she claims was able to escape. She told detectives she ran through lots of woods until she came out near her residence. Detectives highlighting possible holes in her account. She traveled approximately 600 yards in her vehicle while she was on the phone with 911, stating that she was following a child. 600 yards, that is six football fields straight. Authorities also revealing the nursing student previously researched how to take money from a register without being caught and say Russell returned home with $107 cash in her sock. Didn't really know how to process it, you know. Russell's employer at a local spa telling ABC News he's considering pressing charges if in fact the money came from his register. If I thought I had an employee that was capable of doing that, I, they wouldn't be an employee of mine. But um, she got along with the other employees. Everything was seemingly normal. Now authorities urging Carly to come forward with more information. There are many questions left to be answered, but only Carly can provide those answers. And we reached out to Carly Russell's family, but her parents declined to comment. Police say they haven't determined whether a crime was committed, but their investigation continues. But Michael, a lot of talk about this case compared to the thousands of other people who have disappeared, haven't been found, and didn't get the kind of attention that Carly Russell did. Yeah, just baffling. So many unanswered questions, Janae. Thank you. After speaking with the 911 operator, she went missing during that conversation sometime after 9. Carly Russell's disappearance sent shockwaves through the state of Alabama for 49 hours as a search for the missing woman worried many. Local police, federal law enforcement, family and community members all trying to find the 25-year-old after this 911 call last Thursday. I am on Interstate 459 and there is a kid just walking by themselves and That call coming from Interstate 459 South Russell telling a dispatcher a toddler was walking alone on the side of the road. Police would arrive to find Carly's car, wig, purse, and phone, but no sign of her or the toddler. 22 caller, RP back. She's not at their vehicle. 
CLA red in color to Nicole Russell out of Birmingham. And for we're not getting the female to answer. We're trying to call her back. She's not answering. 42, just be advised her vehicle's unlocked, running. All her personal belongings you can check for her phone. Police say on Saturday night, Russell showed up at her parents' home. Listen to what she told detectives. When she got out of her vehicle to check on the child, a man came out of the trees and mumbled that he was checking on the baby. She claimed that the man then picked her up and she screamed. The next thing she remembers is being in the trailer of an 18-wheeler. Hoover detectives also described what surveillance video at her job showed before Russell called 911 that Thursday. Surveillance video from her place of employment shows Carly concealed a dark-colored bathrobe, a roll of toilet paper, and other items belonging to the business. Detectives say the 25-year-old also stopped at a Target where she bought snacks that weren't found in her car when officers arrived and say her internet search history over the last month are, quote, relevant to this case. On July 11th at 7.30 a.m., the term, you have to pay for an Amber Alert was searched. On July 13th at 1.03 a.m., the day of her disappearance, a search for the movie Taken, a film about abduction, was conducted. Hoover detectives say they hope to speak to Russell again, but so far that hasn't happened since she returned home Saturday. We're still working this case, and we've been working this case until we uncover every piece of evidence that helps us account for the 49 hours that Carly Russell was missing. Frank and, uh, and Pam Bearfield Training Center. I'm Captain Keith Sescaliba, that's spelled K-E-I-T-H-C-Z-E-S-K-L-E-B-A, with the Hoover Police Department. Joining me at the podium today will be Hoover Mayor Frank Brocato, spelled B-R-O-C-A-T-O, and Hoover Police Chief Nick Derzis, spelled D-E-R-Z-I-S. You may also hear from Lieutenant Daniel Lowe, spelled L-O-W-E, of the Hoover Police Investigations Division. Mayor Brocato will make a brief opening statement, and then Chief Derzis will read a prepared statement. After Chief's statement is complete, there will be an opportunity to ask a few questions regarding this investigation. Keep in mind that this is still an ongoing investigation, so there may be some questions that we cannot answer. With that, I will turn it over to Mayor Bercato. Thank you and good afternoon for you all coming today. You know, six days ago, our community learned about the disappearance of Carly Russell, and it sent fear and pandemonium not just through our city, but uh, the entire state and the nation as well. The media quickly joined us to get the word out about Carly. Our community sprung into action, and they organized search parties, arranged prayer vigils, and they took other steps that I'm not even aware of to help in this situation. The Hoover Police Department quickly rallied multiple partner agencies, stopping at nothing to find Carly. I'd like to take this time to say thank you first to the Hoover Police Department, our partner agencies, our wonderful community, and to all those that aided in some way in connection with this situation. As the days have gone on and more information has been shared, we know ev everyone has questions. The Hoover Police Department is known for being very methodical and thorough with their investigations. For that reason, we did not feel comfortable speaking in detail publicly until now. It is important that we share this information now so that our community can be put at ease. So at this time, I'll turn the microphone over to Hoover Police Chief Nick Dursis. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Thank everyone for being here today. Besides me stands the team who played a significant role in this investigation. I want to thank our department, members of surrounding local law enforcement agencies, the FBI, Secret Service, United States Marshals, and ALEA for their assistance in this case. We said from the evening of July 13th, our focus would be the safe return of Carly Russell. That occurred on Saturday, July 15th, approximately 49 hours after she called 911 and disappeared. From that point, our focus has been to determine Carly's whereabouts during that time and what exactly took place. Let me say up front, this investigation is not over. 
We're still working this case, and we work in this case until we uncover every piece of evidence that helps us account for the 49 hours that Carly Russell was missing. However, through the public interest, and in some cases, public fear that this story has generated, we owe it to our citizens to tell them the facts that we have uncovered. So I will give you the facts that we know today. On July 13th, at approximately 8.20 p.m., Carly left work from a business at the summit. Surveillance video from her place of employment shows Carly concealed a dark-colored bathrobe, a roll of toilet paper, and other items belonging to the business prior to her departure. She ordered food from Tzatziki's at the Colonnade and traveled there. She then traveled to Target on 280, where she purchased some granola bars and Cheez-Its. From there, she remained in the parking lot at that shopping center until 9.21 p.m. when she drove to I-459. Carly communicated on her cell phone with individuals known to her while in her path of travel up to the point of calling 911 at 9.34 p.m. And at this time, we will play the 911 call in its entirety. called a relative after speaking with the 911 operator. She went missing during that conversation sometime after 9.36 p.m. Traffic camera footage was obtained which depicted this portion of the incident and that footage was analyzed as part of the investigation in conjunction with the 911 call and cell phone data to accurately determine the time frame. Carly's 911 call remains the only report of a child on the interstate despite numerous vehicles passing through the area at that time. No one has called to report that a child is missing, and the Hoover Police Department did not locate any evidence of a small child walking down the interstate. Data from Carly's phone 
including her Life360 app, shows that she traveled approximately 600 yards in her vehicle while she was on the phone with 911 stating that she was following a child. 600 yards. That is six football fields straight. 600 yards. The Hoover 911 Center received a second call from Cardi's mother stating that a relative was on the phone with her when they heard Cardi scream and then they had an open phone line. Hoover police officers arrived on the scene within five minutes of being dispatched and several other officers arrived shortly. They located Cardi's wig and cell phone in the grass near the vehicle. Her purse was located in the front seat of her vehicle with her Apple uh, watch in the purse. The food she ordered for Tzatziki's was also in the car. The items she purchased from Target, as well as the items taken from her place of employment, were not in the vehicle, nor were they located anywhere around the scene. Hoover police deployed all available assets from the point in the search for Carly. Additional resources were called in to include our own drone unit, crime scene investigators, numerous detectives responded to the scene. Throughout the day Friday, Officers from surrounded local and federal agencies assisted Hoover Police in the search for Cardi Russell. Officers returned to the scene on 459 to conduct a thorough line search for evidence. K-9 teams from the Jefferson County Sheriff's Department responded to check for any sign of Cardi, the child that she claimed to see, and anything else that could be considered evidence in this case. Those searches all turned up empty. Private citizens, including search parties organized by our family, friends, began looking everywhere that they could to find any trace. These searches took place throughout the day Friday and again on Saturday yielding nothing. At 10.44 p.m. on July 15th, the Hoover 911 center receives a call from Carly's residence stating that she returned home on foot. In subsequent investigations, detectives obtained surveillance footage of Carly walking down the sidewalk alone prior to arrival at her residence. She was conscious and speaking with paramedics when she was transported to UAB. Detectives were able to obtain a brief statement from her prior to being treated and released. During the statement, she told detectives that while traveling down the interstate, she saw a baby walking down the side of the road and called 911. She stuttered when she got out of her vehicle to check on the child, a man came out of the trees and mumbled that he was checking on the baby. She claimed that the man then picked her up and she screamed. She stated he then made her go over a fence. She claims he then forced her into a car, and the next thing she remembers is being in the trailer of an 18-wheeler. She stated that the male was with a female. However, she never saw the female, only hearing her voice. She also told detectives she could hear a baby crying. Detectives, the male had orange hair with a big bald spot on the back. She said she was able to escape the 18-wheeler and fled on foot, only to be captured again and was put in a car. She claimed she was then blindfolded but was not tied up because the captor said they did not want to leave impressions on her wrists. She said that they took her into a house and made her get undressed. She believes they took pictures of her, but she does not remember them having any physical or sexual contact. She stated the next day she woke up and was fed cheese crackers by the female. She said the woman also played with her hair but could not remember anything else. At some point, she was put back in a vehicle she claims was able to escape while it was in the West Hoover area. She told detectives she ran through lots of woods until she came out near her residence. During this interview, detectives noted that Carly had a small injury to her lip and she claimed that her head was hurting. She also had a tear on her shirt. Detectives also noted that she had $107 cash in her right sock. Out of respect for Carly and her family, detectives did not press for additional information in this interview and made plans to speak with her in detail after giving her time to rest. Detectives continue analyzing data from Carly's cell phone that was left behind at the scene. We enlisted the help of the United States Secret Service in conducting this analysis. Part of what data included several internet searches in the days leading up to their disappearance that I think are very relevant to this case. On July 11th at 7.30 a.m., the term, you have to pay for an Amber Alert was searched. On July 13th at 1.03 a.m., the day of her disappearance, the term, 
how to take money from a register without being caught was searched. On July 13th at 2.13 a.m., the day of her disappearance, the term Birmingham bus station was searched. On July 13th, 2.35 a.m., a search for a one-way bus ticket from Birmingham to Nashville was conducted with a departure date of July 13th. On July 13th, at 12.10 p.m., a search for the movie Taken, a film about abduction, was conducted. There were two searches related to Amber Alerts on a computer at Carly's place of employment, including one regarding the maximum age of an Amber Alert. There were other searches on Carly's phone that appeared to shed some light on her mindset, but out of respect for her privacy, we will not be releasing the content of those searches at this time. We've asked to interview Carly a second time, but have not been granted that request. As you can see, there are many questions left to be answered, but only Carly can provide those answers. What we can say is that we've been unable to verify most of Carly's initial statement made to investigators, and we have no reason to believe that there is a threat to the public safety related, related to this particular case. Thank you very much. With that, we'll open the floor for some questions. Please raise your hand and I will call on you. Carol. Chief, do you expect any charges against Carly Russell in connection with the disappearance and in connection with what was taken from the Woodhouse fall? Right now, our focus is to determine those 49 hours, so the investigation continues. So to be perfectly honest with you, that hasn't even uh, in our mind or been discussed. One more question. Is it surprising to you that the family has not been cooperative in returning to be questioned? Well, I think the, fam the family has stated to us that they didn't think that, uh, that uh, in her mental state right now because of, uh, of trauma uh, of, of the incident, that she's not ready to talk is what we've been told. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, uh, question for Chief. Uh, you stated that the abductor had orange hair. Was this abductor black male? Was a female black female, white female? Or? I believe it's a white male. Am I correct by saying that? Was it ever? Yes, yeah, white male. Is this uh, alleged abductor yet on loose in the Hoover area? Don't believe so. Yes, ma'am. Chief Brittany Dion, WBRC, has a toxicology report been done and were any drugs or illegal substances found in her system? We have uh, no report of that. Is any indication of mental illness in this case? There, there's been a concern in the community that if this were turned out not to be a, a true story, that the next time a young woman of color filed, was, was missing, that it might not be taken seriously. How would you respond to that? I'd respond to say that uh, we investigate every crime to the fullest, just like we have this one. Right Is she traveling with anyone Excuse me, was she traveling with anyone since the time she disappeared, to your knowledge? And, uh, not to my knowledge. Chief, I know you said you weren't able to verify a lot of aspects of the story. Where do you think she went, and how would you characterize what happened here? You know, that's that's uh, that's the hundred dollar question. Uh, you know, we we pretty much know exactly what took place from the time she left work until she got on the 911 call, and we can see getting out of that getting out of the car on the interstate from from that footage, and after that. I think she only knows. We don't know. Well, one quick follow-up. Her parents. Did you speak with Carly's parents? And why do you think it is they were so adamant that there was an abductor? Yeah, I, I think uh, parents are believing what their daughter's saying. And we, we've had a very good rapport with the parents. Met with them on several occasions. I've talked to them uh, today a few times. And to make them understand that we're under pressure from our community, not only in our community of the state, but nationally when the story hit. And I just wanted them to understand that uh, today we were going to have a press conference and what we were going to detail today are facts. And everything that I've told you today is actual facts. It's not innuendos. It's not what I think. It's not what these detectives think. It is the factual information that we have. Chief, I'll give you about this at WBRC. How much time do you think you'll give the family before going back to college? Well, I think our detectives have talked to the parents and uh, we're ready, uh, we're ready to, to talk as soon as she's ready. So, you know, she called right now. We're ready. Um, how about unknown? Uh, you know, we, we, we know the facts that we have. Everything else is unknown at this time. In the back. What, what have the past few days been like for you, your department? 
this has been a stressful search, hasn't it? Well, a absolutely. And, and again, the focus of the investigation uh, that Thursday when she went missing, of course, the focus was to get Carly home. That's what we want all. We wanted her safe and safe and sound. And that's all happened. And then, of course, this, is, uh, this has gotten to be not only a local state story, but a, but a national story. So, uh, you know, it is. It, it's, uh, it's a lot of stress on, on everyone in, in the Hoover Police Department, in the, the, the mayor, uh, to, to every, uh, every citizen here. Uh, we want to know the truth. As you stand here, are you frustrated? I wouldn't say I'm frustrated. I mean, I'm very happy that, that Carly's home. That's the, that was the main ingredient here. And then we'll, uh, we'll figure it out. I promise you that. We'll, we'll end up figuring it out. Any idea about the number of manpower hours or the expense of the drones and, and all the rest of the search that that might have cost the city and the state and the federal government? Yeah, I, I, we haven't had time to, to, to consider that. But it's, a, you know, again, these detectives that are, that are here, this is just a small, a small group of people that have been, uh, been associated with this case. We have put every available resource that we have on this case because we wanted to make sure that we found out everything. We wanted to get her home, and we have. Not that, not that I'm aware of. Can you just expand on the uh, people from the state, the federal resources brought in, what were they doing exactly as you all were searching for her? Can you just expand on that? Sure. sure. Uh, a lot of the, uh, a lot of the, uh, uh, from the, from the FBI side, uh, several, several agents helping us interview. I mean, as you well know, in a case like this, especially when it goes uh, national, we, we got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of calls. And when you get those calls, some of them may just be outlandish, but you've got to, you've got to follow up on them because you never know that you may get that one tidbit. And uh, I'd also say too, that we had a great cooperation with the family. The family received hundreds and hundreds of tips and every time they got a tip they sent it to us would you say a crime has been committed in no. this case uh, we have, we have not determined that no chief mims wagg 610 summit media question for chief uh with all of the searches that you mentioned chief that were on carly's phone does that kind of give you an indication of her mind state during this ordeal the 48 hours yeah. Well, you know, again, I, we want to talk in facts, and, and I, I do think it's it's highly highly unusual to uh, uh, the day that uh, that that someone gets kidnapped, that uh, several seven hours or eight hours before that, that they're uh, searching the internet, googling uh, the movie Taken about an abduction. I, I find that very uh, very strange. Yes. Yes. Um, do you feel confident? Do your investigators feel confident that you know why? No, we do not know. Absolutely not. Chief, can you explain for us, you mentioned that while in the movie center, Carly was on the phone with 911, she was traveling six football fields, which tells you what? Which tells me that uh, I've had kids, and I'm sure a lot of people here have, and it's very, very, again, she said it, and I'm not saying it couldn't happen because I've always been one of these guys, never say never. But six football fields. I, mean, I, I like ath I like athletics. I like football. Six football fields. To think that a toddler, barefoot, that could be three or four years old, is going to travel six football fields without getting in the roadway, without crying, without any any just moving down. It's very. It's just very hard for me to understand. Chief, have you used any technology to enhance the video from 459? And did you see a man grab her? We did not see, from what we can tell. We don't see anybody on the interstate other than uh, her car and then someone getting out of her uh, driver's side. We have sent that, uh, that off to the uh, FBI for enhancement. It has not been returned. Do you think in this case that charges will be forthcoming towards Harley Russell? And how serious of a crime is it to not only fabricate a 911 call, but to lie to law enforcement during investigation? Well, you know, again, that's not something that we've been discussed as we're going through the, uh, through the uh, uh, still investigation. But, you know, people have to understand that uh, when, when someone says something like, the, like this, we put every available resource, everybody comes together from, like I say, state, local, federal. It, it, it's, it's just a lot of work. And, uh, and, and, and you know, it's... It, the man, man, gentleman early said frustrated. I mean, it is a little frustrating to think that uh, all this has been done and, and we can't find uh, find anything out. Did anyone see her calling in from the side of the road when she made that 911 call? No, not to my knowledge. All right, last so question this, here. Is this investigation held up until you can speak once again to Carly Russell? Well, there's a few things that we're still doing, but uh, obviously we want to talk to Carly as soon as we can. Uh, and, and do an in-depth interview, and at that per time, uh, I think we'll have these investigators doing some other things. So uh, right. that's all the questions we're going to.
you guys coming, and we'll be following up with y'all later. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time, Chief. Thank you very much.